61A, lecture number 34. Announcements. I will extend the deadline of homework nine until after Thanksgiving. That's the homework about macros, which we just covered on Monday. If you had been going to lab and going to discussion, you'd be in a good position to solve the homework. But I think without lab and discussion, it's not fair to get you to do it just this week. So if you've finished it, wonderful. You can take a break over Thanksgiving. But if you'd like a little bit of extra time to understand macros and ask questions about them, you have it because we've extended the deadline. Also, all students will automatically receive attendance credit for Discussion 12, since many of those discussions will not be held. I don't have any guidance at this point about which discussions will be held and which won't. That's really up to the GSIs. But my sense is that most discussion sections are not meeting and hopefully you're getting some information from your GSIs about whether your discussion is going to meet or not. Lab 12 is due today. There's a walkthrough playlist that should help you if you're stuck. It really tells you how to solve the problems. So take a look at that and then you can finish the lab and submit it by the end of today. Homework 8 is due tomorrow. If you're stuck, the first thing I would recommend is that you check out this guide video that was posted to Ed last night. Uh, it summarizes some of the answers to questions that I received in office hours yesterday. And so if you run into similar issues, that's, those um, comments might help you out. I do expect we'll have some office hours tomorrow as well, and I will do my best to keep this office hours calendar down here updated. So Justin has some office hours today and tomorrow. I've held this block because this is normally when we hold 61A office hours. My guess is that the time frame will shrink, but they will have a few hours available at some point Thursday or Friday or maybe even both. And normally on Fridays, I hang out on Memorial Glade and talk to students not about their homework. But if you want to come talk about your homework then, you're certainly welcome to. And you can even meet my dog. The Scheme Project is still due next Tuesday. You get a bonus point for submitting by Monday. You also get two automatic bonus points for submitting the project and one more for the extra credit question. So hopefully you're still working on Scheme. And if you have trouble, come into office hours. Lecture 36, which is next Monday, will be video only because I'll be out of town. So I'll post some videos on YouTube. It will be shorter than usual. And there will be no live lecture or Zoom lecture. And that will actually be the last lecture in the course that contains required content that you'll see on the final exam. The last week of classes has some optional stuff and a bunch of review. If you're looking for something else to do over Thanksgiving break, you could participate in the completely optional Scheme Recursive Art Contest. Submissions are due the Monday after Thanksgiving. And the way it works is that you use the scheme interpreter you built in order to draw some cool picture. You're welcome to use our scheme interpreter as well, but it's kind of fun to think that you could use your own. So you write some scheme code in contest.scheme, run it in order to draw some cool image, and submit that. The version of scheme that we use in 61A does have built-in graphics where you control a little turtle that moves around the screen. And if you want examples of the kinds of things you can draw, you can look at past semester's submissions. Here's the most recent semester that I taught the course, fall 2021, and we can take a look at what people did. When you draw an image using Scheme, you can also give it a title, and you can write a haiku about it. So for example, you can draw this recursive flower with flowers, with flowers inside, give it a title, Bright Flowers, and give it a description. And it should be the case that we can look at the code that generated this in case you want to find some ideas about how it works. And students in the past have drawn some wonderful things. Here is one from the last time I taught the course, The Moon is So Beautiful Tonight, Isn't It? For each program, we count the number of tokens, which includes parentheses, and we divide all of the entries into two divisions. The featherweight division can have at most 512 tokens. The heavyweight condition can have many more tokens, so these are longer programs, 
which tend to result in more elaborate images. Like somebody drew this cool recursive train going off into infinity, and some people in the past have combined beautiful art with some amusing titles. Here is De Niro adrift on an ocean of our tears. And one student even figured out how to make an animation. In this case, generating a lambda using Fourier transforms. Pretty cool. So whatever you decide to do, whether it's simple or elaborate, I can't wait to see it. Having a graphics contest is one of my favorite parts of the course because it just unlocks students' creativity. It's always fun to see what you came up with, and so I hope you participate. But it's not worth any points, and it's completely optional. It's just for fun. Today we'll start on a new topic in the course, declarative programming, and we'll learn a new programming language, SQL. We'll end up spending three days or three lectures learning about SQL. There's a fourth optional lecture, and the reason that we have this number is that I started out spending less time on SQL in the course, and then I'd ask students at the end of the semester, would you like me to cover even more of this topic? And every semester they said yes, until I stopped asking because I decided that four lectures was enough. But we're only going to require that you understand the material in the first three. The fourth one, which we'll cover after Thanksgiving, is how you can build something that uses SQL and Python together, which is pretty fun. Okay, let's dive into it. 